Hi everybody. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about some advanced strategies uh, for charting with the MACD. Um, it gets very complicated, um, but we're going to go through it and try to study it as in detail as we can. Um, so the general idea is that usually people chart uh, directly on the uh, price graph, um, but uh, a more advanced topic is trying to chart on the MACD line. So. You can actually do that on a number of other ones. I have a cleaner volume oscillator here. I've tried charting successfully on that uh, and the uh, money flow index. And then you could also even chart on a regular volume graph, just doing different levels uh, and different things like that. Um, but primarily uh, I wanted to focus on how to chart on the MACD. So here's a first layer um, of charting that I wanted to show you. Um, so basically what I did is I, I I, you know, it's, it's basically a downtrend here, um, and you can see also on the MACD that it's a downtrend um, with some variance right in this this region right in here. So what you can do is you can draw your line. Um, I just draw my line there, but it the, the peak was right around here, uh, and you can see the peak on the MACD is right around there, so you can draw it through the peak if you'd like. Uh, and then I'm going to do it halfway between the signal line uh, and the uh, MACD line, and then I'm going to do it right around in here uh, for the day. So maybe move it up just a tiny bit, just a tiny, ever tiny bit. It's hard to get it perfectly the way you want it, um, but that looks about good to me. Um, so I, uh, I I like that I like that line, and it gives me an idea on a high level uh, what the MACD is doing. So the nice part about charting the MACD. Uh, is that you can go to sub levels of the chart uh, and then use the same line uh, and then rechart at lower levels. So in general, this is a downward trend since about the 16th. Now, if we go to a hourly chart, uh, we can see the same MACD line. Now, it didn't really come in right, so I can pull it in a little bit and bring it in to where I think it's right, right, um, and then I can put it essentially like that right so then i could go back to my hourly or my daily chart and say see where that went and i can say oh, i don't really like that i'm going to move it back to here right so it really depends on where these lines are i can put it through the crossing here um and basically do that so i don't like to move it once i've made it on the chart i don't like to move it on the lower time frame i like to keep the correct one there so uh Basically, you can see that it kind of goes right here. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there uh, and then do new charting. So I changed the color here for this. Uh, I'm just going to do red on the 60 minute chart because this is very important. Um, and we can see now we can chart it here, right? And we can also chart these highs here is decreasing. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the lows are actually making faster progress than the highs, meaning that we do have some tendency here to go up. Now you can also do the same charting with the signal line. Now we don't really have an exact space for this, so we might have to move it a little bit because we don't know about the turnaround here. So we're gonna just estimate on that, right? Now, and then further, we can do it on the histogram, believe it or not. Uh, and you can chart on the histogram too, uh, and that will give you some ideas as well. So I'm going to chart on this histogram. Now the nice part, the really great part about the histogram, uh, and also uh, with the regular graph, is you can do a horizontal line. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line in red here, horizontal. I'll just change the color to yellow. So these are crossing. So I can say that these averages, this looks like about the peak average. It's taking some time to load because it's cross time frame. Uh, but you can say that the peak was right around there, and then the the valleys are right around there, right? Uh, and then you can further say that there's an inner one for the histogram. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to see. So the histogram one, and I can even change the color on that uh, to a green. You can say histograms were about like here, and this was there on that top one. So now we start to see some different intersections where... Uh, we have breakout points. So the nice part about these charts now is we're starting to see certain time frames. So I can set an alarm on my clock or my cell phone and just say, hey, there's going to be a breakout potentially right here, right? And that looks like uh, at uh, 1300 tomorrow. Um, so 
Uh, and that's based on a lot of different ideas. We see a lot of different convergences there. And then another potential convergence right in here. Um, but that's at 6, six o'clock in the morning, uh, 7 o'clock in the morning uh, on the following day. So uh, uh, this is very helpful uh, in general because you can tell where the breakouts potentially might be. Uh, and also the peak, so you can see that uh, you know the maximum here on this this time frame. We can see that this is pretty much the maximum, so we can expect a reversal. Uh, we can even start saying when the reversals are going to be on the major charts based on these MACD lines. So I'm going to do halfway between the signal line, and I'm just going to do another. I'm going to do a set of uh, kind of pink lines on these higher reversal lines. These are major reversal lines. So essentially this reversal was anticipated because you can see all those other reversals are about on the same line. Um, so this is starting to become a pretty useful chart. Um, you can see that there's another potential reversal point and inner reversal points in here, uh, and then the further reversals and then the zero line crossing is also a major point. Um, so. Uh, anyway, I hope this has given you some more advanced topic of how to chart this. It looks pretty <laughs> fancy. Uh, you can even go to lower time frames. Uh, I, I sometimes like to do it all the way down to the minute time frame because each one of these become new uh, kind of like areas. Um, and you can see that you have, uh, you know, maybe we can move some of these lines a little bit around and maybe we even have a new uh, level of support here on the MACD that we could use. Um, and it just becomes very complicated, so I'm not gonna do all the way down, but I'll do maybe one on the lowest time frame so you can see. So it's taking a little while to load, sorry about that. Um, but you can see that the lowest time frame actually only shows one point in here. Uh, and basically that's, that's the only one it shows. So uh, to do this, I'm gonna have to clear out some of this because it's kind of slow on my computer, um, but I can change this to a line. Um, and uh, I just got so many lines on here that it's kind of slow. Uh, give me one second. Uh, so I cleared out those lines just to speed up the process here a little bit. Um, and now we got, again, we got this uh, a level of resistance, and then we have another level of support down in here um, that we can draw this line on. I don't know why it's giving me kind of a hard time drawing this. but So now we can see that once we start breaking uh, these levels, uh, we should be really concerned. Now, I did this based on the histogram here. Um, so it, it can be confusing, but they're all interrelated, so it can be possible to graph them all on one graph. Um, but anyway, I hope this has been really helpful for you. Uh, it's been really helpful for me to see, um, just so I can find breakouts and different divergences and convergences, and basically where uh, potential future points are. So this is a way to uh, kind of look at future points, not just past points. Uh, when you do charting. Thank you. I hope this is all. Uh, let me know if there's any questions down below. Please like and subscribe and let me know if you have any suggestions. Thanks a lot.